today's the solar eclipse and we're going to shoot it. And while some parts of the U.S. will see a total eclipse, here in the New York, New Jersey area, we'll only see partial coverage. So this tripod, the head is, is there used to be a button right here. Right. And now there is not. Now there is no button. So I have gaff tape on here, the broken piece of the camera, uh, of the tripod rather, and I just kind of like jam it in there to get it to release. And there you go. It's done deal. Thanks for joining me in the lab. Today we're going to be editing some of my eclipse photos, specifically aiming to make a compilation of the event, kind of like this one. So you can use this guide as a baseline to edit your own, and it's really quite simple to do. It does make things easier if you, to some degree, planned on doing a composited image of this nature beforehand. Well, let's jump into Photoshop. First thing we're going to do is sample the background of one of your photos. What I did on my bottommost layer was fill the entire image with that sample. That way when I play around with my blending modes, I know that the background will stay consistent. Now, my photos were taken through the duration of the eclipse, so they're not all perfectly aligned. This happens because the earth is rotating, or maybe you moved your tripod around. In any case, I made a simple line straight across my image and used it as a guide to line everything up. Now I'm going to start bringing in my photos and aligning them on my cool purple line. I'm setting the blending mode of all of them to screen so that the images seamlessly lay on top of one another. The shot in the very middle will be treated a bit differently, but we'll get to that later. Once everything is in place, you're going to notice that the edges of the photos look a little ugly on top of one another. So I'm going to jump in on each layer and create a layer mask. If you've never done this before, it's a really simple concept. A layer mask simply lets you paint away parts of your image. I'm using a feathered brush to ensure that my lines aren't too harsh. I'll just paint through all of my images. I got into the habit of turning individual layers off while I mask to make sure I'm as accurate as possible. You could be done right here, but I wasn't too happy with how the middle image was looking. At first I just masked it, leaving a bit of the silver clouds surrounding it, but it felt a little out of place. I spoke with my good friend Steph and she suggested that I ditch the background for the most part, so big ups to her for helping me decide in the final image. There's a few ways we can mask out all around the sun in this exposure, but the quickest bet in my opinion is to grab the magic wand tool. Since for the most part it's one color, it shouldn't have an issue selecting the sun. Next I'm going to use the refine edges tool to clean up the selection a bit. This is a really great tool, especially when selecting something that has complicated shapes like hair. Once I feathered my selection a bit, I'm going to invert my selection so that it selects the whole image minus the sun. Then I'm going to create a mask. Since the sun isn't selected, you can paint right over it with your brush tool, and the mask won't affect it. And there we go, nice and clean masks on the image. You could be done right here, or you could bring everything into Lightroom now and do some more edits to the color. This is just a personal preference though, I much prefer Lightroom to Photoshop. Anyway, I hope this tutorial helped out, and I hope you enjoyed the vloggish thing at the beginning. Thanks for tuning in, and be sure to send me what you made if you followed along.